Okay, now that we have control of our motors, um, we're on 6.3 motor software setup. Um, the PID, baseline PID values are in the control. And I want to show you where the baseline PID numbers are again, just for reference, it's F1, F3, 137, the basic uh, password to get in. And then we go to F4, and then F1. And here's where the baseline PID settings go in. I was fortunate enough, as I previously mentioned, that my, uh, I had some starting points. Uh, the values came right out of the all-in-one DC installation guide. So I was able to check them. They actually, from default, the software already had them and they matched up. So that seems to be working because the motors are, are uh, holding steady for now. So this part's done. Uh, you need to get this resolved so that you can move forward and that is in uh, the next part of the motor software setup. So if you have trouble with this, um, I suggest that you call Centroid Support and uh, see if they can help you out. Maybe they already have some baseline values for different motors. Uh, again, mine were Glentex, uh, so they're fairly common. So I already had baseline PID numbers. So let's get out of this. Okay, we're at the main menu. It says, do not have stall detection disabled. So you recall that we did the control V um, previously. They don't want us to do that anymore. We want the control to monitor the servos. And it says, set the feed rate around 10%. So when you don't have a jog panel, you do Alt-J. And then it says feed rate override. Let me get you in a little bit closer to the screen. Okay, so it says it wants to set feed rate override. So when you look at this, it's control posit plus and control minus. So if we go, go control minus, you look up here, it says feed rate. We're going down. We hit the control plus and we're at 10%. So we're holding at 10%. That's where they want us to do this next testing. And then it says jog each servo motor while it's disconnected from the machine if you've not already done so. Use arrow keys on the jog panel or MDI commands to confirm that the motors are moving correctly. While jogging, disable increment mode by making sure the button on your jog panel labeled INCR incremental continuous is not lit up. Well, we can't see that here, but we can see it up here. Right here it says continuous. So if I do the control alt i that's incremental and it says we're in tenths mode. So we want to go continuous. So we're going to do control alt i again. We are now in the continuous mode. And we've got the rabbit and the tortoise. Um, we're just going to leave it where it's at because we're in slow jog, so we're in tortoise. And now it's a matter of using the, the left arrow and the right arrow for X. And I'm looking at my motor, and it is turning. And then uh, the up arrow and down arrow keys for Y. And it is turning. And then the page up, page down for Z. They are turning. And uh, it says danger. The first time jogging the servo motor, it best practice is to have it disconnected from the machine, either physically removing the motor or removing the gear or drive belt. This way, if something goes wrong, there is minimal risk of mechanical damage to the machine. If one of the parameters or settings was entered incorrectly during the setup, a motor may oscillate violently or move out of control. And that's what I had. I had runaway. So had my belts been on and that runaway occurred, that table would have just gone flying, you know, or the Z would have just come, come down because it, it went full, full RPM on a motor. So this is why during this phase, you want to make sure you're unbelted from your lead screws or your, you know, if, if it's a different drive, you just want to make sure you are disconnected. Just a motor by itself is turning. My motors are installed on the machine but they are not, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're unbelted at this point. So, uh, good point. And this is note, after jogging, when the motor stops moving, a little bit of rumming noise from the motors is considered normal. This is just the so sound of the motors trying to hold position. I feel that on Z and I can hear it a little bit. I can hear, uh, feel a little vibration on my Z motor. 
a little bit on X, a little bit on Y. So they're holding position. Uh, troubleshooting tip number one, if movement does not occur, check for errors in the status window. We don't have any errors. And then it says, uh, if and then the next tip too, if during jogging or while holding position the motors are visibly oscillating are visibly oscillating during, there is most likely a problem with your PID settings. Manual tune the motor. Use Tech Bulletin 260, which can be found here, and it gives you a, a link to that tech bulletin. And then troubleshooting tip number three, during the troubleshooting process, if you want the motors to stop holding position, issue an M93 command in the MDI. So we don't really need to do that. It says, after successful motor movement, power down the system. Manually move all axes to the center of their travel to provide safe clearance when the motors are connected to the machine. Mechanically connect the servo motors to the machine, allowing the motors to control the movement of the machine. We need to belt the motors to the machine, and uh, that's the next step. So it's going to take me a little bit. I'll go ahead and belt the motors and we'll continue on.